Hey everybody, it's uh, Jay Bear. Daniel Lemon here. We are live in an undisclosed hotel room in Santa Barbara, California, bringing you the 2019 Talk Triggers Awards. Thanks so much for being here. We have a special um, inflatable alpaca friend here as well. Um, you know, we don't really want this guy. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, leave your prediction, not prediction, your, your creative answer to what the name of this inflatable alpaca should be uh, in the chat. Whichever one we like best, uh, Daniel and I will both sign this guy and, uh, and ship it to you. That'll be our gift to you. So best name uh, for the inflatable alpaca is going to win uh, an inflatable alpaca and maybe uh, we'll throw a book in there as well. But, but the real reason we're here is not to give away an inflatable alpaca, uh, but actually to give away this or these, I guess, is multiple of these. Uh, these are actual alpaca trophies. Uh, it looks like a chocolate alpaca. It looks like something you would get in the world's worst Christmas stocking. Yeah, or at Easter, perhaps. Yeah, it's yes. Not hollow, though, it like is not, yeah, it is. Uh, we're going to give away uh, these uh, awards, the Talk Triggers Awards for 2019. Uh, we are super excited about it. We can already see uh, guesses uh, coming in on the best name. Uh, for the alpaca. I'm going to give everybody a couple more minutes to uh, to dive in before we get started. And then we're going to show you all of uh, the finalists for the Talk Triggers Awards. How many finalists do we have? Uh, 18. 18 finalists. We'll reiterate this uh, again when we start showing you the, the actual awards presentation. But all 18 of these finalists are brand new. So if you've had the chance to, uh, to read the Talk Triggers book, shown wrong hand, shown neither one of those are right shown there. Um, uh, thank you very much. But every single one of the finalists that you will hear about today are not in the book. It's all new since the book came out. Some of them you might have heard uh, Daniel or myself talk about on stage, but, but all new ideas. And what's cool, some of you may be in the, in the Talk Triggers Facebook group as well. Uh, if you're not in the group, uh, just ask to join the group in the chat below. And uh, Kristen Cardos, our amazing community manager, will put you in the group. It's really cool. We got all people talking about Talk Triggers. Yeah, yeah. We've couple thousand members in there now, I think. At yeah. This point. People and, have read the book. And some of the, some of the finalists uh, for the 2019 Talk Triggers Awards are, are folks that, that are part of the group or that we sort of got the idea, somebody knew about it in the group and, and serviced it to us. So one of the neat things about word of mouth is it literally has been around since like the first caveman, you know, told a story about another caveman. Uh, it is the original form of marketing, literally. Uh, and and it never will go out of style, right? In fact, as we talk about in the book, it's probably more important than ever. And and so there is never any shortage of of great examples. That's what's so fun about this, right? That it's sort of the ultimate evergreen uh, kind of circumstance. And while this is the 2019 Talk Triggers Awards, we certainly suspect that we'll have 18 more great examples for 2020 uh, and beyond. To that end, uh, if you're in the Talk Triggers group or you want to be, as mentioned. Um, ask about that in, in the chat. And if you've got an idea, either in your own business or a company that you've just stumbled upon and experienced, please let us know. Because we're always looking for uh, great ideas, either for the awards or for uh, future books or things that we do on stage or uh, other projects. So, so you know, we, we can only find so many ideas <laughs> ourselves. Although a lot of, some of these we did stumble upon ourselves, but, but uh, most of them we heard about from somebody else, which ironically, is the nature of word of mouth. That's the whole point, right? Someone told us a story, and now we're telling you the story. So certainly, uh, let us know if, uh, if you find some great examples out there. We would, we would love that as well. Okay, I'm going to share my screen or attempt to do that without uh, disrupting our, our highly professional set here uh, in this hotel in, uh, in Santa Barbara. Um, uh, this is, actually, I'm just going to show you. Here's our microphone on some toilet paper right here, which is working out great. Um, I'm going to show this, show the screen, and then uh, we will uh, get right into the awards. Okay, here we go. In theory, so, yeah. All right, here we are. Uh, welcome to the uh, the 2019 Talk Triggers Awards. If you just joined us a minute ago, I'm Jay Bear. He's Daniel Lemon. Uh, this is the Talk Triggers Awards. We are together, which doesn't happen very often because I live in Indiana, Daniel's in Los Angeles, here in a, a hotel room in Santa Barbara, California that we have uh, turned upside down to create this uh, award studio. Uh, we are here to give away this and these uh, alpaca trophies to six amazing companies who, who are doing great things with, with word of mouth. Yep. 
um, as some of you know, I mean, I don't know, we didn't talk about this much. Mm -hmm. Today, like today, is the first anniversary of the book, right? One year ago today, Talk Triggers came out, which is why. That's why we thought, well, what better way to celebrate all of the work that people are doing in word of mouth than to, to go get some really random trophies and, and, and hand them out. <laughs> exactly. They were remarkably hard to find alpaca. Uh, yeah, alpaca yeah. You can't trophies. just go to your, your, your local neighborhood uh, trophy store that makes like really? uh, T-ball trophies. Say, hey, I need, uh, I need some uh, alpacas. They just, they don't do that. Um, so yeah, we thought a good way to commemorate the one year anniversary is to, is to recognize some companies that are doing great things in word of mouth. As I mentioned a moment ago, None of the examples, none of the examples you hear about today are actually in the book, all brand new. So exciting for us and hopefully exciting for some of you, even if you've uh, seen and read the book. Uh, a couple of quick notes why this is important, right? So by 2020, which is like three months from now or less, uh, a majority of purchase decisions will be based on customer experience, according to our friends at Walker Information Systems, which means that customer experience is more important than price now and availability and ingredients and everything else. And, and I think we all as consumers and as business people know that to be true. Like we see it, we feel it, but we don't necessarily behave uh, that way, do we? It's kind of a mystery still, even though we know word of mouth is so important. You know, perhaps we don't know exactly how important it is. So let me just share a couple of stats with you. What percentage of purchases are caused by word of mouth? Meaning that this purchase took place entirely because someone told you a story. It is 19% of all purchases. Now, I just want to contextualize that for you a little bit. That is larger than the entirety of e-commerce. Okay, so think about that. How big is e-commerce in the world? Word of mouth is responsible for more purchases than e-commerce is responsible for. It is not a minor part of your business. It's a major part of your business. And in fact, 90% of purchases are influenced by word of mouth in some way, meaning that, that I decided to buy uh, this um, very strange trophy, partially because someone told me a story about it, partially because of Google, partially because it just happened to be available, et cetera. So word of mouth is a contributing factor to as, as much as 90% of all purchases, yet, we know that people have the power, right? We, we know that we trust each other more than ever. We trust businesses less than ever in many cases. I'm not telling you anything that you don't already either know or suspect to be the case. Yet, however, even though we all care about word of mouth, very few of us have an actual word of mouth strategy. We talk about in the book that, that fewer than 1% of all businesses have an actually defined word of mouth strategy. Which given the numbers we just looked at, like something that's, that's important in your business, like what other thing would you do in your business that is, that is impacting between 19 and 90% of every dollar or ruble you have in your pocket and yet you have no strategy for it. You're just like, yeah, well, you know, let's just kind of hope for the best. Like n the answer is none. Like, nothing else that important, or even close to that important, would you try to tackle with, without a plan? And that's why we think that talk triggers is, is so important because it gives you a scaffolding to do word of mouth on purpose. Because today, even though we'll show you some examples to the contrary, the overwhelming majority of businesses <laughs> are still doing word of mouth on accident, if at all, right? They just figure, hey, you know, let's just kind of go about our business. And, and if we just kind of point ourselves in the right direction, our customers will notice that and talk about it. But, but that's not actually the way human beings behave, right? They, we, we don't talk about things that are, that are normal or average or things that we expect. We talk about things that are different. We talk about things that are purposeful, uh, which is why having a talk trigger, an operational choice that you make to create conversations is, is so critical to do word of mouth uh, right and, and to do it better. So that brings us, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2019 Talk Triggers Awards. Before we jump into this, I, I just want to acknowledge um, everybody who worked on this, uh, Daniel and, and Kristen Cardos, our community manager, the whole team at Convince and Convert, Kelly Santina, uh, Megan Leap, all the participants in the Talk Triggers Facebook group, all the folks who have read the book and continue to read the book, um, everybody who has participated or watched the uh, Talk Trigger show, which is a 20-episode 
uh, YouTube show I did about talk triggers and, and then like the literally thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, who have been experiencing uh, talk triggers on stages around the world for Daniel and myself. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been a crazy, uh, fantastic year. Uh, thanks to everybody for your support and, and we're looking forward to more to come. All right, what's, uh, what do we got here for categories? We've got a lot. So there are six categories, as we said, 18 different companies in total. And uh, this is the lineup of restaurants, hotels, retail, e-commerce services, higher ed, and healthcare in no particular order. Three finalists per category? Uh, yeah, three finalists, three finalists per finalists category. So 18, category. 18 finalists total. So what we're going to do is tell you a little story. We're not going to go into great detail. We don't want you to be here all day. Uh, uh, and tell you a little story of each of these finalists. And then we have selected a winner, the one that we kind of think is the most talkable uh, for, for each uh, of the categories, yeah? Yep. You're gonna do restaurants? Uh, I'll start with restaurants. Okay, yep. restaurants. <clears throat> so here we go. There are three restaurants coming your way. The first is an ice cream shop in Dallas, as well as Salt Lake City, two locations called Howdy Homemade. Now, what's interesting about Howdy Homemade? Well, ice cream itself is not a terribly easy business to differentiate in, it's ice cream. It, we sort of, you know, this guy looks like chocolate. <laughs> but it's not chocolate. It is not chocolate. It's like but melting chocolate. It's, ice cream suffers from what could be described as the chocolate problem. We all love it. And yet, what is there to really say about ice yeah. cream? It has, yeah. It's all good. It's not like you can be that much better than everybody else. That's, that's pretty much it. So Howdy Homemade has very, very good ice cream. But what they do different and what people notice about the Howdy Homemade experience is the people. Howdy Homemade, you see, they don't just hire anyone, they hire only uh, people with special needs. Uh, in fact, the founder of Howdy Homemade, Tom, says he's on a relentless pursuit to provide employment for individuals with special needs. And people go crazy for the experience there. They talk about how friendly and warm and loving the, the store is, as well as the quality of the ice cream. That is not something we should overlook. You can't have terrible ice cream and run a business in ice cream. But Howdy Homemade chooses to do that one thing a little bit different. People in his community yeah. certainly notice. And uh, we love the example because it's, it's really serving his, his community. This is uh, from the, the rubric or kind of structure of talk triggers, we would say, this one probably reflects talkable empathy. Yeah, so, I like this one too, because uh, you don't see very many talk triggers out there that are rooted in the employee side of it, right? Which yeah. is really cool. I think it's a really interesting uh, example and, and can, shows how your workforce can actually be the differentiator. So if you're in Dallas or Salt Lake City uh, or thereabouts, look up Howdy Homemade. It's, uh, it's the real deal. This is one of my favorites. And near your, it's right near your house. Right? It's in my home, hometown, although full disclosure, I have not actually experienced this myself. I, I think you have. Yeah. I have, yeah. Uh, so at the top of the Intercontinental Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, a 71st floor, very tall building, is a place called La Boucherie. Uh, it's actually a steakhouse up there on, with killer views probably some of the best service in Los Angeles. And uh, no doubt, good beef, if not great beef. 100%, yep. yep. Good beef, if not great beef. Uh, one of the differentiators at La Boucherie, aside from the view and the many other things we could talk about, is the, the steak knife menu. They have, you can actually see a picture of it here. They have uh, what looks like- uh, I think it's 11 or 12. Yeah, yeah, like a dozen different steak knives. Any knife, any type of cut of meats, really not just steak. Yeah, they give you like the, the Aussie, like you call that a knife, like here, Crocodile Dundee <laughs> one, which is kind of like the one on the left. And then they've got like the more delicate French ones and they've got like Japanese ceramic ones. It is super cool. And I got to tell you, like, you know, my dad used to own a steakhouse. So I kind of nerd out on this kind of thing anyway, but it's sort of paralyzing because you've never been given that many options, right? You're like, well, I don't even really know. I mean, they're all super sharp, right? So that's not really a sharpness. You're like, well, I don't know. You're starting to feel like, how does this feel in my hand? And you spend all this time at the table and it's such a cool experience. And what's, what, you know, we talked about this in the book too, that, that the key to talk triggers is making it an experience, right? When you're at Harry Homemade, you're interacting with the staff. At, at La Boucherie, what's the key is they don't just like give you, um, like a laminated card with pictures of the knives. Cause that would be interesting, but not that talkable. The, the, they have like a knife, <laughs> like a knife made, like a knife sommelier, right? Like a knife sommelier comes over in that same box and like presents it to you, right? So that, that sort of, it's in three dimensions. You can touch them, you can hold them. It makes it an experience and that makes it so, so talkable. And it's a really important point because 
um, like I talked about on stage, um, uh, Doubletree uh, Hotel uh, gives away the, the warm chocolate chip cookies, as many as you know, we talked about it in the book. And 34% and approximately of Doubletree's guests tell that story routinely. I'll bet you everybody watching uh, this Talk Triggers Awards has been to a hotel that has a basket of apples at the front. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever told that story. Yep. Zero percent of people. And the difference is very small. The cookie is an experience. They hand you a warm cookie. It's a hand-to-hand -hand pass. Apples are just a basket. It's a passive differentiator. And the boucherie gets that just right, right? They, they, have, they present you the knives. It's not just pick a knife from the menu. And it's really, really key. The other thing I love about this example is it reflects one of the things we talk about. A lot of the differentiators in the book and, and the examples you'll see today are operational in nature and often drawn from something you already do. A steakhouse has steak, has steak knives. knives. Yeah, all the they time. now just have a much wider range of steak yes. knives, which... Yeah, I'm going to open a steakhouse that um, only has small chainsaws. Yes. Tiny, tiny chainsaws is going to be incredible. Um, look for that. Uh, yeah. It's coming soon. So if you're in LA, the blue should be good choice. choice for that. Yeah. The last example, uh, it's a slightly different take on, uh, on, on the issue. This is a talkable attitude. This is a, uh, a cafe in Sykeston, Missouri, Lambert's Cafe. Yeah, and they have a couple other locations too in do. Missouri. Yeah. Yep. This is the home office. And maybe in Arkansas as well. Yeah. Uh, Lambert's Cafe is uh, good food, lots of fun, big portions, things you might associate with kind of your neighborhood friendly cafe. But the thing that, that really differentiates there is when they bring out the bread, they don't just bring it out. In a basket. No. No. No, they full on throw it at you. Yeah. And expect it's you actually to catch like the hot baseball roll. sized hot rolls. Yeah. And they they yeah. just kind of do that. Yeah. That's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And people are like, over here, over here. And it's like, you know, if you ever go to like a baseball game and sometimes you get like the peanut vendor and that guy's super good at throwing bags of peanuts. It's like that but with hot rolls, luckily not buttered until they get to the table because that would yep. be kind of a greasy mess. But it's like a whole thing, right? Th this, is, this is what they are famous for. And <laughs> when we were talking to them, it turns out that they actually try and hire like high school kids who actually have like a pretty good arm, right? You yep. can't just like show up and be a waiter, you know, unless you have like a decent, you know, accuracy, you know, football quarterback, you know, kid who plays second base. I think it's hilarious. Yep. They also own, uh, the, in a very wise move, they bought throwedrolls.com. So, so you go great. to their website. Throwedrolls.com. Yeah, it's yep. such a talk trigger. It's in their URL. Yeah. Yeah. So Lambert's Cafe, if you're in the mood for a little bit of interaction in your, your meal. Yeah, exactly. If you've got good hands. Uh, I have not been uh, to Lambert's Cafe, but uh, I'm going to be in Missouri pretty soon yep. for an event. So I'm going to try and pull that off. I do like to throw food. So yeah. that, that works out well for me. All right. Are we ready to announce a winner in this category of restaurants? Okay. I like it. Yeah. Should yeah. we like, okay, go ahead. Press the button. So among the three, we looked at kind of all of them and we have a winner. Number one in restaurants. 2019 Talk Triggers Awards. Ready for it? Yes. Howdy Homemade. Howdy Homemade in Dallas, Texas and Salt Lake City. Congratulations to them. Uh, their alpaca trophy is uh, on the way. Super excited about what they're doing. Love the fact that they uh, turned their employees into a differentiator. I guess to some degree, um, Lambert says that too with the, with the uh, arm, strength, yes. arm strength waiters. Uh, but we're delighted, especially Talkable Empathy. That's one that Daniel and I both kind of have a sweet spot for um, in terms of the, the, the talk trigger variations. It's a, it's a great one. So, yep. Howdy homemade. Way to go. Congrats. Uh, go ahead. Next category, hotels. We're in a hotel right now, ironically. Yes, uh, next category is hotels. Three terrific options here. First is the Magic Castle Hotel, also uh, near Daniel's home in Los Angeles. Uh, Magic Castle Hotel is not uh, affiliated with the Magic Castle performance space, uh, but is right nearby and, and uses the same name. Uh, so a lot of people who go to the Magic Castle to either perform or, or go for dinner or for the Magic Show stay at the Magic Castle Hotel because it's adjacent. Uh, it's, it's pretty fantastic. They've got like a tiny little pool there. It's kind of old, kind of old LA, would you say? Yeah, it's kind of like kind of their, yeah. their, their vibe, you know, um, sort of that, that, uh, that look and that feel. Uh, and it can be a little hot in, in LA, especially when the sun's out. And so you can wander over to the side of the pool and pick up this red phone that you see here. And it is the Popsicle hotline. <laughs> so you just say, yeah, I want orange or I want strawberry, whatever. And a couple minutes later, a server comes out with a Popsicle on a silver tray 
and hands it to you while you're uh, lounging around the pool, which is pretty fantastic. Popsicle hotline. I want a popsicle hotline all the places. I want one here, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, that is pretty great. And again, like we talked about a minute ago, it's an experience. Yes. Right? If it was just like, hey, um, next to the pool, they have uh, like a cooler and ice chest. And if you want a popsicle, just go get one. Mm -hmm. That would be neat, but you would never tell a story about it. Yeah, you would never talk about it. stayed in hotels that have, the, they come around with fruit or yeah. other things. And I don't know that I've ever actually talked about no. that. But it's the hotline, the fact that you pick up the phone and they bring it out to you in the silver tray. That's what makes it a story, right? Popsicle hotline from Magic Castle. Uh, second uh, finalist in uh, the 2019 Talk Triggers Awards category of hotels is the O'Hare Motor Inn in Great Falls, Montana. And this is one of the episodes of the Talk Triggers show as well. Great Falls, Montana, um, not really near very many things. <laughs> I think uh, putting it here, although they got like 48 inches of snow this uh, this week in the in the crazy Montana snowstorm. So uh, the O'Hare Motor Inn, their resident uh, bar and, and restaurant as part of the the uh, Motor Inn is called the Sip and Dip Lounge. Sip and Dip Lounge is a, a regular lounge, been around for a long time. It's a tiki bar though, which is a little different from a Montana perspective. Uh, but their talk trigger is that every night from nine o'clock to midnight, they pull back the curtains behind the bar. And as you can see in the photo, uh, it's a swimming pool and it is live human mermaids, live human mermaids swimming behind the bar from nine to midnight every night. Uh, so unexpected, so talkable, such an experience. It was named by GQ magazine, the number one bar in America worth flying to. And I got to tell you, flying to Great Falls, Montana, uh, is a commitment. You gotta, you gotta want to make that happen. So, uh, love that one. They've been doing it for a long time. They have to like train the mermaids to to, to swim, and you can't, you can't just like throw somebody. Again, another example of staff, yep. you know, of, of employees being uh, being part of the talk driver. Love that one. I have not personally been to the O'Hare Motor Inn, but it is like bucket list for me now. Like it is seriously. Uh, next time I'm in Montana or thereabouts for any reason, I'm going out of my way. <laughs> To, to get on some of that mermaid action for sure. Uh, third one, um, also from uh, from Southern California. I don't know why SoCal is like dominating the talk triggers in 2019. It's it's the uh, presence of Daniel Lemon. You're emanating uh, ideas to your locations. This is a uh, Weston Hotel, Weston uh, Mission Hills in Rancho Mirage. It's Orange, Orange County. Uh, Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Palm Desert. Yeah. Um, they've got a uh, man. This is such a really cool idea. So. Certainly pets and pet welfare, a, a big topic as it should be. Weston Mission Hills doesn't just pay lip service to that and, and donate money. They actually do something about it. They turn it into an experience again. So in the lobby, they always have a dog up for adoption. And, and so they have now had, how many, how many dogs have they? Have I they, read a hundred. They have, they've had over a hundred dogs. Over a hundred dogs adopted. So imagine, imagine it's like, hey, you know, we're just going for a staycation and, you know, you leave with your luggage and maybe a visor yep. and a bottle of wine and a dog. Yep. Right. And over a hundred dogs adopted from the lobby of this hotel. And I tell you, talk about putting your money where your mouth is, right. And, and just, you know, doing something about a problem uh, that everybody recognizes is a problem. Uh, well, it's really commendable. Yep. Another great example of talkable empathy too. Yeah. Uh, you know, even if you don't adopt the dog, you can take the, the dog out for a walk if you're you know missing your own back home. Yep. So it's a great one. Yeah. All right, winner uh, for the category of hotels. Now, as much as I wanted it to be popsicle hotline, just out of out of general popsicle love, uh, the winner is the O'Hare Motor Inn and their legendary uh, mermaid show behind the bar. Uh, the Sip and Dip Lounge is a, a, an all-time classic uh, talk trigger example. Uh, there's lots of bars in Montana, that I do know, uh, and very few of them would you tell a story about. This one, everybody tells a story about. And, and you can tell this is such an effective talk trigger because when you look at their uh, Yelp reviews or their TripAdvisor reviews, what we would call the talkability percentage in the book, the, the, the ratio of those reviews that mention the mermaids is super high. <laughs> 
super high as, as of, of course it would be like, how could it not be? But that's one of the ways you determine how effective your differentiator is, right? Is, is what percentage of people tell that story and a very high percentage of their customers tell that story and rightfully so. Yeah, I, I do have, I wonder, and if some of you have been to the O'Hare Motor and maybe you can answer this, especially in the winter time, is this year round? They, I mean, they just have like 30 inches of snow. Yeah, I believe, I, I, I believe that the pool is indoors. Uh, oh, that would has a bubble over it. Yes, that would um, be a benefit. Would in a make place more sense. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's a it's a frozen caveman <laughs> show. Uh, in six months out of the year. <laughs> Excellent point. Uh, <laughs> next category is a retail and uh, and e-commerce. Retail and e-commerce. Yeah, I know we got three finalists in this one. Yeah, this is places you shop or places you buy from uh, online or offline. So. Um, Chewy.com. This is a place uh, that I personally have interacted with Me and too. done business with. Uh, Chewy.com sells pet stuff like uh, you would probably imagine with a name like Chewy.com. And we, we uh, reflect on sort of the things that they do different uh, in, in the, again, the talkable empathy kind of model. Uh, Chewy.com is really outstanding at customer service. They go above and beyond to serve their customers. But where you really begin to experience that difference with, with Chewy.com is when uh, you, you have uh, the unfortunate uh, um, situation of pet has passed. Uh, and in cases like that, uh, when they become aware of it, maybe you call in to cancel a subscription to pet food or to uh, an item you receive on subscription. They, they don't just apologize and, and, and kind of have that live interaction. They follow up with that often with a handwritten note and a bouquet of flowers or some other uh, gesture, which is, uh, if you think about the times and places you interact with a customer as an e-commerce yep. company, you don't have that many touch points. It's the box that yep. you ship the thing in, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and Chewy.com has done such a great job. In fact, uh, you know, th their customer experience is one of the uh, reasons they were acquired by PetSmart a few years ago yep. uh, for a couple billion dollars, I think. Right. I mean, it's a category where everybody is selling the exact same thing at the exact same price. Yeah. So what, why would I buy from them? And it's because they really do have that customer first mentality, that talkable empathy, I would say almost Zappos-esque in, in, in a more modern um, uh, time period um, than when Zappos first started. It's, uh, it's, it's notable and, and their customer loyalty as a result is off the charts. Yeah. yeah. It was one of the factors cited when they, when they were acquired, this customer experience, their customer loyalty was one of the factors that people talked about that has to be a reason they were valued so highly. Yeah. Pretty great. Uh, next one, moosejaw.com. This is an outdoor retailer. They, uh, gosh, they do a lot of things. Really Owned by well. Walmart now. Same, same kind of idea. They got purchased by Walmart because they were so disproportionately affected in the category. And they're like, hey, we should snap these guys up. Yeah. yeah. And I love the notion of customer experience with e-commerce because it's not intuitive. You think, well, I don't have customer touch points, yeah. really. Moose Jaw, you see any copy that they write, it is funny, if not downright hilarious. Yeah. It's always drawn from the sort of uh, sense of irony and, and sarcasm. Uh, this is just a order confirmation that we happen to find here, but you look at any of their, their customer copy. Yep. Is... Website, just like the regular email newsletter. Uh, I, I am an avid indoorsman, as many of you know, uh, but when I do need to buy something uh, in the outdoors category, either very rarely for myself or, or more likely for a gift, I always buy from Moose Jaw because it's so funny, right? They, they completely, they know exactly what their brand personality is. And they've amped it up so much being so funny that it becomes a talk trick. I, I tell this story uh, all the time. I got just, just their weekly newsletter a couple of weeks ago. I got their email and it was a picture of a guy with a note on his desk. And it said, my boss, Brian said, I've got to get the click through rate up immediately or I'm in big, big trouble. That was the email. That was the whole email, right? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, love this, right? Yeah. It's just, it, it's, it's really, really great. And I got to tell you, as we talk about a little bit in the book, if you're going to pursue talkable attitude, you've got to do it all the way through. It can't be, hey, we're funny every once in a while, or we've got a funny website, but everything else is not funny. It, it has to be kind of at the molecular level, right? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it just feels like you're just putting on a funny suit of clothes for 10 yep. minutes. They've got it baked into all the different elements of the experience, which is really cool. 
Yep, and we would call that talkable attitude. Talkable attitude, exactly. Last example, Tony's Chocoloni. This is a chocolate bar that you can buy. Uh, like a lot of chocolate bars, you will notice it's scored to allow you to break it off and eat it. Uh, but you might, when you look at it, go, oh, that's kind of curious. It's, it's not done in squares or rectangles or circles. It's done in these weird, irregular shaped pieces. And when you investigate why, at the back of the package, you learn that uh, Tony's Chocoloni is committed to drawing awareness to fair trade and the, the inequity in sort of the chocolate trade. So the chocolate is designed to make you aware of that. The packaging sort of fulfills that message. Um, they've created, used it to create uh, customer stories about, about that inequality. It's, uh, they're using, in their case, the actual packaging, the products yeah. as the talk trigger. We get questions about that a yeah. lot. Like how can I use my package, my That's product? Right to be to deliver a talk trigger the experience here is when you break it off you're like hmm this is a curious why experience. is this one smaller than the other one because the the share of of profits and success in the chocolate business is is unequal and so the the pieces are unequal as well we actually learned about this one from our friend mark schaefer's uh, terrific book marketing rebellion to learn more about all the things that uh, that tony's doing at tony's chocolate only uh pick up uh, uh mark's book it's uh, it's really great uh, marketing rebellion so those are the three finalists. Are you ready for the winner? In the category of e-com and retail, the winner is Chewy.com. Chewy.com. Congratulations to the team at Chewy. One of the reasons why we selected them is you see tons of evidence of their talkability in social media all the time, right? You, you see their customers willingly tell that story, engaging in online word of mouth and uh, spreading the, the gospel really of, uh, of Chewy.com's customer experience. Yeah, great. That was retail and e-commerce. Next one is services. Category of services, three finalists in the services group. First one uh, is our friend Corey Phillip from Gulf Coast Aluminum. So I, I am from the West and now live in the Midwest. I've never lived in the, the Southeast, but as it turns out, and those of you from that part of the United States will, will know that when you uh, build a swimming pool or have some sort of outdoor space in your home, it's very common to, to put a, a kind of cage around that, <laughs> I guess is the best way to say it, uh, to, to make sure that uh, bugs uh, and, and uh, raptors or, or other things, alligators, alligators yeah, don't, you, you got to cage your pool. Uh, and Corey runs a company that, uh, that does just that. It's called Gulf Coast Aluminum. It's on the West Coast of Florida. And so every time he and his team build or, or refurbish a pool cage for his customers, they leave without telling the customer, they just do it, uh, a, a life-size uh, artificial owl on the very top. You can see in the photo an example of the owl that they leave. And then customers are like, where did this owl come from? Why is this owl here? Was the owl fairy visiting my house? So not only does it create customer stories and they tell each other, oh, wow, they gave me a free owl, but it serves a real purpose as well because it keeps other birds uh, who are scared of owls uh, from roosting on, on the cage and then or defecating on your brand new pool cage. So not only is it uh, talkably uh, useful, uh, which it is, but it's also talkable generosity because they give you an owl uh, for, for no reason and don't tell you about it and they don't make a big point of it. They just do it, which is really cool. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> I love this one. Uh, based in Los Angeles as well, it's, it's crazy. Um, so plumbers is a category that's not really differentiated, right? I mean, you know, you can't be like, we're the best plumber because we've got the best wrenches or, I mean, there's just, it's hard to live um, in, in a differentiated environment when there isn't an actual any differentiation at the services level. So Mike Diamond, uh, who is a, the owner of a plumbing company, fairly large plumbing company in Southern California, uh, has created a talk trigger, which is that Mike Diamond and his team are the smell good plumbers. They... <laughs> They actually guarantee that the plumbers that they send to your home or your business will smell good, which is a differentiator uh, in some cases. Uh, I've, I've personally witnessed plumbers that did not meet that test. Uh, and and I, it's great. I hadn't thought of it when I, I actually saw this truck in my neighborhood, which is how I discovered this yeah. 
Uh, I hadn't thought of plumbers smelling bad, but apparently they do in some cases. So Mike Diamond Plumbing, the smell good plumbers, uh, again, it's an experience. Uh, again, it's staff based. That is a terrific talk trigger. Last one in this category uh, is based in Florida. They're starting in Florida and then I think um, spreading out uh, geographically. So unless you're in Florida, I don't think you can get access to these guys just yet, but it's called Tree Drop. So the whole idea of Tree Drop is pretty cool. Uh, and, and it's like this, it's like Uber for Christmas trees. So instead of having like go to the tree lot and deal with that or chop down your own tree or you know, whatever, you just go on a mobile app and you say, hey, I want this size tree and I want a fir versus a not fir, um, some other kind of pine. pine. Oh, yeah. Thank you, yeah, yeah, fir versus pine. And then they'll just drop it off of your house. Uh, and then when it's done, they take it and uh, take it to the landfill, et cetera, they chip it, what have you. So the whole idea is pretty great. You know, if you say Uber for Christmas trees, like that sounds cool. But the talk trigger goes one step further, talk about generosity. So when they bring the tree, they give you a little um, uh, array of chocolate chip cookies <laughs> and then a note that presumably your children can fill out to leave those cookies for Santa Claus, which of course is the uh, thing that uh, many people do on Christmas Eve. So not only do they bring you the cookie, or the tree, they bring you the cookies as well and kind of tie it together, let the kids be part of it. Really cool, uh, love what uh, Tree Drop is doing and uh, can't wait for them to expand across the country. I think it's just a good idea in general. Yeah. You know, they say, you know, you always laugh about it. It's Uber for whatever, but Uber for Christmas trees, I'm like, cool. It's actually Uber for Christmas trees. Yeah, it's a bit of a seasonal business, but, yeah. uh, but I like the idea very much. Okay, so what, who's the winner here in uh, the category of services? Are you ready for it? Number one in services is Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast Aluminum. It's our buddy, Corey, uh, who we actually learned about in the Talk Triggers Facebook group, right? Isn't that That's right. how that worked? Yeah. yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, if we're not in the Talk Triggers Facebook group uh, with thousands of, of other business people who are working on their word of mouth strategy, just uh, leave a, a note in the chat uh, and we'll make sure to get you invited to the Facebook group. There's so many great ideas in there. And what's cool is that people are really helping each other. Uh, which is what we really wanted to do when we started the group is like, you know, we don't need to answer everybody's question. Everybody can answer each other's questions and it's, it's working out great. So congratulations, Corey. One of these is, uh, is on the way. Corey, what I would like uh, is for you to build a pool cage with this alpaca trophy on the top and send us a picture of that. Thank you very much. Maybe an inflatable one if that's easier and that would be great. Next category, higher education. Now I love that this is even a category, right? Mm -hmm. Because we do a fair bit of higher education work at Convince and Convert. And you don't typically think of colleges and universities as super duper good at word of mouth, right? Um, there's other things that are talkable maybe, but, but you know, it's not, it's not something that you would generally associate with that um, category because it's academia and everything's very serious and, and put together. Um, but we have found some amazing examples in, in higher ed. Three made the final, Sam, will take them through it. All right, the first one is, it actually starts before you even get to college. If you you have two at college right now, mm -hmm. you've been on the campus tour experience multiple many, times. Many, many, and most of them are perfunctory and mundane and terrible. Yep. Here's a building, uh, and this is where we feed people, yes. and this it's is where we teach science. Mm -hmm. Campus tours are not generally terribly interesting. Which is a shame because it's the most important factor in where people matriculate. Yeah, there's one, there's actually a number of, of universities that do different things with their campus tour, but one that I love the most is Alfred University. Why do we say this? Well, Alfred University does their campus tour on this crazy looking conference bike. So you roll up to the tour, they say, hey, uh, we're going to show you the university, the campus today, the trees and the buildings, cafeteria, but uh, we're going to hop on this pure bike and go zooming across yeah. campus. So it becomes a very visual experience yes. for students. It's kind of crazy. But Instagram worthy for the kids for sure they're looking at each other it becomes is it a conversation uh yeah i really like it yeah and the other thing i love about this we talk about sometimes talk triggers connecting to your 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 mission or your brand ethos or your your heritage alfred university actually talks about being outside of ordinary so there, there are a lot of reasons and ways that comes up to life this is the way they for prospective students yeah. choose to do it it's a very good demonstration i think of attitude yeah, it's a great one i really like it a lot I want one of those bikes. They're crazy. I've done, I've not the campus tour, but I've done the conference bike. There might've been some drinks involved. Yeah. Yeah. Which 
it's a different experience. This one's actually one of our clients, Arizona State uh, University. Yeah. So if you've ever been to an ASU game, you've been to ASU games. ASU basketball game. Yep. yep. Some um, levels. Yes. It was weird because they're, they, let me just say ASU uh, being in the Phoenix metro area has a really tough time with attendance because they have all four pro sports, like multiple golf tournaments, IndyCar race, NASCAR races. Like there's a lot going on uh, in that market, a huge amount of competition um, for, for time and, and for dollars. And so their basketball attendance was not good. Uh, not good at all. And then they came up with a talk figure. And if you've been to a game or seen it on TV, you may be familiar with the now infamous curtain of distraction. The curtain of distraction. So when, when the other opposing team is shooting free throws uh, in front of the student section, they actually have a curtain, right? And then they pull it back. And while the person shooting free throws, something weird pops, pops out from, from behind uh, the curtain. It could be, you know, like guys inflatable just- alpaca. Inflatable right alpaca. Good. It could be guys wearing Speedos. One time it was- um, Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer who swims out of Arizona State now. Uh, so it's just, they, they try and make it as random as possible to throw the, sh the shooter off. Uh, two things. One, 230% increase in uh, ticket sales. 230%. And two, this is such a thing that Harvard did a study mm. on the actual impact of the curtain of distraction on the game and found that it's worth two points a game uh, to Arizona State. Now that's, you know, two points a game uh, may not seem like much, but, you know, in a close game, it could literally be the difference uh, between winning and losing the contest. So yeah. uh, it's, it's pretty fantastic. And, and it's important to note that the curtain of distraction was invented by and is still managed by the student support group at ASU. So it wasn't really an institutionally led program. It was <laughs> the students were like, hey, let's just do something funny. To their credit, the university signed off on it, but, but uh, it, came, it came from, a, from the groundswell, which is so cool. Yeah, that's a great example. And the, you know, another example of attitude, which is, it's funny, uh, actually all three of the examples we're gonna share with you in higher ed are attitudes yes. in nature, yes. which, Okay, be prepared for this next one because the photo alone is is a little a little much. It's yeah. Kanazawa College in Japan. Yeah, this comes from uh, our friends at at this. It's a important to note. It's an art and design school yeah. uh, in Good point. in Japan. Uh, but they one the thing they do different at their graduation. They say, well, you know, we're an art and design school, so we're not going to do caps and gowns. Yeah. That just Boring. doesn't fit. You can wear anything you want to graduation. Anything you want to graduation. And so they're graduation looks kind of like a comic-con it's like an it's like anime it looks a lot like comic-con or yeah. like the cantina scene in the first star wars like it's a, it's a bit of a freak show for sure including guys dressing up like packaged meat which yeah. is a, an amazing yeah <laughs> just yeah number one you got to keep your arm up that whole time that feels like that would be uh that would get tiresome uh yeah that's yuck that's what that <laughs> is. there's some great if you go uh and search for their college graduation i've seen you see everything there yeah and they're just sitting you know waiting for their name just yes yeah, in the auditorium and their weird costumes yeah uh there's one a guy uh, dressed up as like a giant shallow like an eight foot tall cello it's hilarious so uh and what's been interesting about this they get so much media coverage like global television media coverage because the visuals are so strong yeah right? and obviously if you're an art student or a design student, prospective art or design student in Japan, I'm sure you know this story and it has an influence on, you know, uh, where you want to go to school. It's a good one. All right. So here we go. Three great examples. Yes. Who did it? Who's the winner in the category of higher education? Ready for it? The alpaca goes to yes. Arizona State University uh, in Tempe, Arizona, the curtain of distraction. Uh, congratulations to our friends at ASU for an unbelievable talk trigger. We'll make sure they get one of these trophies uh, as well. I expect to see an alpaca featured in the curtain of distraction at some point in the next yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, it's, alpaca is the animal of the moment. So it's kind of surprising they haven't had a full petting zoo or perhaps they have something. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Uh, healthcare, sixth and final category of healthcare. Let's see. First one is, oh, well, this is one that, this is one that I bet you a lot of you have already experienced at CVS, the, uh, the very <laughs> popular pharmacy chain from coast to coast. They have a talk trigger where um, regardless of whether you buy a pack of gum or a million things, they give you a very, very long receipt. Uh, so long that this guy, 
<laughs> had a broken blind in his apartment and used a CVS receipt to replenish it, which I think is incredibly creative, number one. It is such a good talk trigger. If you go to Twitter and search CVS plus receipt, you will see a, a, an un, a treasure trove of, of word of mouth. Uh, it, it, every single day, people talk about this talk trigger. It, it, it has huge, huge uh, cultural sort of awareness uh, for them. And, and again, like all talk triggers, it's just an operational choice, right? They just decided to do that. Yep. And it creates so much conversation. Uh, CVS and their very, very long receipts, a great example of a talk trigger in healthcare. And important to note, the, the receipt itself is actually coupons. Yeah. Theoretically, you can use the receipt again. Yes, yes, absolutely. You don't have to put it in your- In your blinds, if in you, your yeah, blinds. Your, your choice. Uh, second one, and this one is a talk trigger that I learned about while giving a talk triggers presentation. I was in Seattle and I finished my presentation and a guy came up to me afterwards and said, hey, do you know about this particular talk trigger from right here in Seattle? And I said, no. And he proceeded to tell me the story. Ironically, he engaged in word of mouth to tell me a story about the power of word of mouth, which I thought was <laughs> kind of meta. So Dr. Chick Wilson uh, is a surgeon in Seattle, and that's not noteworthy in and of itself. However, Dr. Wilson only performs the vasectomy sterilization procedure, which makes it a little bit more interesting uh, already. However, the talk trigger works like this. When you are finished with the procedure at the offices of Dr. Shick Wilson, a vasectomy surgeon in Seattle, Washington, when you go to the little window, kind of at checkout, if you will, at the doctor's office, you get three things there you get uh, post-operative care instructions, right? So you get the uh, you know, frozen bag of peas or whatever the circumstances are. You, you get insurance paperwork, naturally. And then you get a small black box. And inside that small black box, the offices of Dr. Shick Wilson, vasectomy surgeon, is, as you can see from the photo, an engraved silver pocket knife that says the vasectomy clinic, drsnip.com which is pretty great because you can imagine, you know, like you're hanging out with your buddies and you're watching football or, uh, you know, you're playing golf and you maybe you open a beer with the knife and your friend's like, bro, that's a sweet knife. Where did you get it? Like, where did I get that knife? I got this knife from Dr. Snip, vasectomy surgeon, which is pretty great. Also, uh, as we talked about earlier with Lambert's and their URL is throwedrolls.com, their URL is drsnip.com. So that's leaning into your talk trigger when it becomes your domain name. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like. I also love this example because it illustrates. I mean, this is not probably a, a topic or of conversation for a lot of, a lot of men. However, right. pocket knife share the knife, is the fairly knife, common. The knife gets you into the story. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's like a an unspoken. It's like a gateway, gateway, gateway story. Yeah. Yes. You know, you may not talk about it, but you'll look at the knife and go, Oh, huh. sure. Yeah. All right. Doctorsnip.com. Excellent. The third one is uh, from Plano, Texas the Heart Hospital at Plano. You know, we talked earlier about um, uh, the guys at Moose Jaw and how their talk trigger is sort of baked into all of the elements of the brand. So the website copy, the, the emails, the, the shipping confirmations, everything else. Heart Hospital Plano kind of does the same thing. What, what they're trying to do is really focus on patient comfort and it's incredibly empathetic uh, across the board. So everything is, is really, you know, people talk about, um, you know, customer centrism, right? And customer focus and putting the customer first and all these other buzzwords that everybody's like, yeah, sure, that sounds good, but nobody ever does. Nobody ever actually makes those kind of decisions. These guys do. Uh, it truly is a, a patient and caregiver first environment. Uh, and, and it manifests itself in all these different ways, including the heart-shaped pretzels that they hand out to family members and caregivers when they're in the room or in the lobby. It's just a really special place that, that takes empathy and turns it into a differentiator and no place better to do that than, than in a hospital environment. So congratulations to, to those guys. It's, uh, it's really, really well executed. And this is a, an interesting case because you don't see as much mention about this on Yelp or, or on social media. Uh, people don't really go on and Yelp and talk about their heart hospital experience, but it does show up in the places that matter to them, which is their mm -hmm. patient scores, their yep. quality scores. Yep. Healthbrands.com. It's, it's one of the that. factors that, that has made them the top rated uh, heart hospital, one of yeah. the top rated heart hospitals. Yeah. Well done. Okay, here we go. The winner in healthcare is 
Dr. Snip from Seattle, Washington, drsnip.com. Congratulations on your exceptional word of mouth program. So glad that uh, that audience member tipped me off to Dr. Snip when I was in Seattle uh, last year. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah, for sure. I wish I had a pocket knife here to show you, but uh, we, we need to send away for one. We'll call them and be like, we need a knife to use as a prop uh, when we're doing the talk triggers uh, presentation. So, so one way you get that knife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I've already been down that road. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not eager to do it again just for, uh, just for the prop. Uh, so that's it. The six, six big winners in six categories. Super yeah. pumped up about everybody's uh, fantastic uh, work. Uh, this whole presentation, right? So not only the video, but the actual um, presentation deck that we just showed you is available at talktriggers.com slash awards. That is. So if you want to share it with somebody, you want to download it, you want to spread it around, I want to refer back to it at some point, please feel free to do that. You can get it at talkfigures.com slash awards. And as we said, A, if you haven't named the alpaca, a couple minutes left, jump into uh, the comment section here. Best name, we are going to sign this alpaca and send it to you. Uh, if you are not in the Talk Triggers Facebook group, ask to join in the comments and we'll put you in as well. If you haven't had a chance to pick up the book or share the book with uh, your friends or, or uh, business associates, we would, of course, uh, love that as well. Yeah, it's been a good year. Yeah, it's been a fantastic year. Happy anniversary to uh, the Talk Triggers book. Thanks again to everybody who's participated. Of course, thanks to uh, Daniel. And, and uh, can't wait to get these uh, sent out to, uh, to our big winners. And uh, hopefully we'll have uh, a bunch of new finalists next year for the Talk Triggers Awards. Thanks to every single one of you for participating. We really appreciate it. Live from an undisclosed hotel in Santa Barbara, California, I'm Jay Bear. Daniel Levin. We appreciate you. Happy talking. Make sure you have a word of mouth strategy. It's not too late. Get on it. See you later. Thanks so much. Yeah, there we go. Bye, guys. <laughs>